Hey guys, Gassy TV here with another Path of XL video. In this one, I'm going to talk about the top five minion league starters for 3.17 based on all the information that we have in my personal opinion. Now, without further ado, everybody knows that Mage Skeletons will be the most played minion skill in the game. It is very likely that the Mage Skeleton build will actually be uh, to the point where it will be the most played build in the entire league as well because of how guaranteed strong it actually is and the capabilities that it brings to the table as well. A low budget gameplay using Voldy instead of GMP and it's just... It just walks through content, it can do simulacrums, you can do the aspirational content, it's safe. You can actually place your minions out and then simply just dodge the enemy's mechanics very, very simply, which makes it a very good contender for something like a new endgame bosses that we're getting access to, where we're able to be in a position where you can place your minions and then just focus on dodging whatever abilities they cast on you, which is very comfortable. Um, so I think Mage Skeletals will be ridiculously freaking good. So that is one of the builds that I believe will be... Um, will be the most played um, and without a doubt the strongest uh, league starter options for uh, minion players. Uh, the other builds, I think, um, it's just a quick note, actually, this link here will be available in the descriptions below to all my build guides. Uh, as of the recording, they're not updated, but they should be by tomorrow. So most likely when this is up on YouTube, it, they all, all of the guides here will be updated and some of them will be taken away. Most likely this one will not be in the list anymore because I don't think it's going to be good enough. Uh, build number two that I think will be really good uh, as a league starter is actually going to be i want to say two builds because i want to talk about boy dominating blow as well as absolution well let's start with absolution absolution is ridiculously good as it is uh they don't need dorian's prototype hey, to do well awesome. and uh, i think that the approach of absolution is just absolutely disgusting it is uh, being miscalculated in pub so the dps shown in pub is inaccurate um, I think that Absolution is one of the better minion builds for the sake of endgame bossing and lacks a bit in terms of clearing efficiency, which is what uh, Phantasm support is helping with a lot. But I think that Absolution is the bossing version of the two builds I'm talking about. The second one being um, the Dominating Blow. Now, Dominating Blow has always been a reliable League starter build, but falls off very hard when it comes to bossing. Um, so I think that... Um, when it comes to uh when it comes to dominating blow i think it'll be a really good build to play in general for low budget uh investment to just get the build up and running and start clearing maps effectively without spending a ton of currency you can do everything soul self found very easily even in a trade league because you don't really need anything to get it up and running so i think that between absolution and dominating blow you have one that is excelling in terms of no budgets and just clearing things whilst absolution is generally better for bossing with very low investments uh, but falls off a bit in terms of actual clear speed and comfortability when it comes to clearing. So those are the two builds that would cater or put in the category of the second best league starters that you can run with uh, that we know will work very well. Outside of this, uh, on third spot, in my opinion, would actually be something in the lines of a golem build. I think Spectres are not good enough to be in this list anymore, uh, but golem builds will always be very, very strong. So if you look at carrying gold, for example, which is what you would use till you have four perfect roll or five proper harmony jewels for the cooldown reduction, then you can go stone golems if you want to. But, you know, step by step, golem builds are always reliable. They're sturdy. They do what they're what's advertised and uh, they can do uh, all the content if you pushed enough currency for the higher end game. But they do very well in the early stage as a league starter option and don't stand in bears like I did there in the, <laughs> in the fucking video. But I think golem builds will be very, very good. So that puts us on four builds in three different positions. Now, the last two builds I'll be talking about, I will actually be making new build guides for. Uh, so I will only briefly talk about them and show PUBs for these. And the reason I'm not going to mention the other build, uh, the other types of mini builds is because I believe that these two will be significantly better than other options. And first one is actually a... Um, Chains of Command build. Now, you can start with Chains of Command with a cold damage, uh, which basically means that you'd be using White Wind. Now, you can do this with a, uh, a Serious Disfavor. You can do it with a Rare Axe as well, as long as you're using 4 Green Triad, which is easier to achieve in 317 than it's ever been because you get access to the Socket Craft recipes much sooner than you have been in the past. Uh, so I'm going to show you real quick in game what the socket trick is in this. I'm going to show it on a helmet. So basically with the socket trick is uh, this one has evasion energy shield. So it's going to be very hard to hit uh, green colors on this. These recipes here 
the socket ones will be available in the campaign and not gated in maps anymore, which means you have access to these much sooner. So the way you do it is you would color it with, in this case, I want to have four green. I would put two green sockets for 25 chromes and the ray I get and remaining two sockets to be green would be to make it two sockets and then three sockets and two socket and three socket. Rinse repeat this till you have a green socket. Then you do the same thing with four and three till you get a green socket. Obviously, I got lucky here, but the thing is this one is an evasion based with energy shields. So it's easier to hit green on this item than it would be on something like a triad group. But that's how you would do it. That's the process of getting this done. RNG god, no, the, the, the vertex has evasion based. So it's actually quite common to get the green, green colors of this. But you would do that on triad grip, which has lower attribute requirements than the intelligences on the vertex. So it's actually not that hard to hit. So what's the fundamental pieces on the change the command build? Well, you're going to need to oil replenishing remedies. This is a sepia, amber, and indigo oil. They're very common. You get them very early on. They will be very cheap. And it's a very crucial point to take to make sure that you can sustain your writhing jar flasks. The other point is to pick up the flask mastery and the SS extraction. I don't really think these are needed, but they do help, especially if you only have access to one writhing jar flask. It, it, there's so many mechanical things in this build that I don't want to take this entire video to talk about it. I will be making a guide on this that will be ready before the launch. So stay tuned for that on the YouTube channel. But I think that this will be a very, very good build to, to use. The higher budgets of this will go into Chaos Conversion, which does mean that you're going to use a four white triad where we're using a serious disfavor as a baseline weapon for the Animate Guardian. However, you could get better by running something like a uh, 850, 900 plus PDPS axe, which will obviously cost a lot more currency. But you can very easily push this up to like 21 million Shaper DPS. It's very simple. It does the fear, it does end game content, and it clears very fast. And I can actually show you some quick gameplay with this build. So anytime I pop a flask, he'll do a killing blow, which will sp uh, spawn a weapon. And uh, within range, it will always be enemy guardians kills, uh, which will generate the level 20 version. Whereas if your enemy weapon kills, there's a small percent chance that it will summon a lower level version of it. So you start a map up by casting out your writhing jars, which are self-sustained. And you cast a couple of them. You can have 14 level 20 weapons. And then you just uh, go ham and playing this with the Oculus Profane Bloom doing most of the carrying in terms of clearing. And that's it. And this build is doing really good single target as well. It's not just the clearing build Oculus because the Profane Bloom is carrying that for you. But it's also very good for bossing content as well. Which is why I think this can be a very, very good League Starter build. It's very cheap to get going. Very few people play with Chains of Command, so the item is cheap. Uh, the uh, Gravebind Gloves are very cheap as well. Uh, the only thing that's expensive is not even the serious disfavor. It's actually getting four white on the triad later. That would be somewhat expensive if you want to push this up to higher budget. So that covers the uh, chains of command that I think will be really good. Again, build guide for this will be available before the league launches. The other build I wanted to talk about is not a chains of command, but it is actually a um, dancing dervish. And a big shout out to Bella Bong, uh, who's been in our community here. And we've been talking a lot about it because she has a really nice build guide up on the forums. We made a bit of a different versions with our version, and then we've been taking inspirations from one another, and we've come to a pretty good state uh, with the Dancing Dervish. So if you're looking at the Dancing Dew is what it's called now, but in 317 we'll called, it will be called Dancing Dervish. So the Dancing Dervish is um, basically is using the sword, and you're going with Chevrons for low life. You can go Solaris Lorica for low life early on if you want to, or just not go low life. Uh, you can get free Chaos Rest from the Presence of Chiula. If you skip the extra curse from Malediction, you can get the Chaos Rest from Withering Presence, making these things very, very cheap to afford, making it very effective to get yourself to the point where you actually get um, really high EHP out of this build, and the clearing is all d done by Profane Bloom, more or less. The higher body version of this uh, actually packs some really good numbers, and we're going to have some changes with Dancing Duo, because the biggest issue right now with Dancing Dervish is that the cycloning of them actually makes them miss the enemy's bosses or single target quite a lot, especially when there are more than one target, by spinning away from the target and missing a bunch of hits. However, in 3.17, they're going to change this to use the player new cyclone ability, which hopefully will make this not create that problem and have a better uptime single target. It's actually do very, very well single target damage. The reason we go chaos with this is because of how ridiculously overpowered the corruption and the wither mastery is for the Chaos Masteries. 
Again, this will also have a build guide before the league starts, but I will show you some gameplay footage real quick with this build. It has a similar play style with the Writhing Jar Flasks. Uh, we skip going SS Extraction, but we will be specking the Bass Tree for Flask Charge Regeneration and Replenishing Remedies in this, which you can see in the PUB as well. You need to get Rampage started, which means you need 15 Killing Blows. We do this by clicking one flask, waiting about three seconds, clicking the other flask, waiting about three seconds, clicking the next flask. This is how you get your rampage started versus bosses. In mapping, you can actually go up to the first pack and spam all your flasks and you'll have your shit started immediately. And then your swords will just run around and it will just destroy everything as they are exploding from profane bloom, doing a, getting you a really nice clearing uh, build out of it. And it does the same on low budget as it does on high budget in this case. But the boss thing I'll show you once we get there. Um, this is, however, keep in mind that I am playing on a slightly higher body build. But as you can see, the single target here, the sword span around up here and on the right side and on the left. Many of the attacks missed the target. And hopefully that will be fixed by the um, 3.17 changes to Dancing Dervish. So let me just get to the boss here and I'll show you the single target. You put a wither totem up, you make sure you have your, uh, your wither up and getting your shit up and then the boss dies it's uh it's pretty comfortable and it can do endgame content as well but again i don't have a build get ready for this it will be available before the league starts and that's my top five league starter builds for minions for 3.17 that i think you should be keeping your eyes out for most uh, notably would be the actual uh mage skeleton build uh, as i showed you here earlier mage skeletons will probably be the most played minion build in the game uh, there will be the Dominion Blow and Absolution will be very good. And then the um, Golem will be will be rather popular as well as always. And then the last two would be Dancing Dervish and Change the Command, which I'll be making guides for before the league starts. So that's the top five mini league starters I have. I don't want to post, uh, prolong this video too much. Hope you guys enjoy the video and I uh, hope this helped you decide on a league starter for the upcoming 3.17. And I wish you all the best of luck in there. Uh, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe and comment and all of that shit because it helps the YouTube algorithm. Anyways, till next time. Stay safe. Keep rocking.